Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of differential calculus, also known as Calc 1. All material has an assumed prerequisite of pre-calculus and a full semester course in trigonometry. A thorough review of prerequisite topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all. Solutions, Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video starts a series on the definite integral. Should be your first time actually seeing the definite integral, or if you're new, if you are in Calc 2, you might be reviewing the definite integral, or you might be actually reviewing uh, summation properties required for integral calculus. No matter what, this video is here to help you kind of step through that doorway of integral into integral calculus. The first thing we're going to need to talk about is just summations that you need to recall from your pre-calculus course. So the properties of summations that are going to be very pro uh, important for us are going to be the two properties that you see right here. These are for finite sums, by the way. So if you happen to be in Calc 2 and you're going through sequences and series, there's going to be a few more properties you have to be concerned with. And these properties, specifically the second one, does not necessarily hold if you have an infinite summation. But for now, we're talking about finite summations. So if we allow C to be a constant and A sub I and B sub I just to be sequences that depend upon I, then the following are true. That if you have a constant times your uh, sequence values as you sum them up, you can factor that constant outside. So you can pull that constant out. It's just basically saying that each of the terms within the summation, C times A1 plus C times A2 plus dot, 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 all the way to C times A sub N, they all have a C in common. So you could easily have factored that C out of all the terms. And that's exactly what this does. If you do not understand what just happened, if you if you don't know what a summation is, then you need uh, a lot more help than that. The, you should not be in calculus. If you don't know what a summation is, you should know what a summation is at this point. The other thing that is going to be important is that you can split or break summations apart between um, addition and subtraction, not multiplication or division, but addition and subtraction. So uh, a very simple justification for this guy is that if you add up, maybe I should use a different color here. If you add up, let's just do a, a real finite sum, just the first three. So that's A sub I, let's just do plus B sub I, okay? That would be A1 plus B1 plus A2 plus B2 and so on and so forth, right? Plus A3, B3. And of course, you could, using the commutative property uh, and associative properties of addition, rewrite this as A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus the group B1 plus B2 plus B3. And both of those can be written as their separate sums. I equals 1 to 3 of A sub I plus the summation I equals 1 to to three of B sub I. So that's what this is saying. Now, again, I want to impart or impress upon you the importance of this. If we had a summation, I equals one to N of A sub I times B sub I, that is not going to be able to be split apart to the summation of I to N of A sub I times the summation I equals one to N of B sub I. A very simple counter example to that would be the following. If you take a look at, for an example, the sum of, oh, let's see, I'm gonna go just from I equals one to two, and we'll have the product of two sequences. Let's say I and I, okay, that seems fairly simple. That would be uh, one times one plus two times two, which would be uh, one plus four or five. However, if you were to look at the summation, I equals one to two of the first 
guy, that guy right there, times the summation i equals 1 to 2 of the second guy, well, that's going to be 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 2. That's 3 times 3, which is 9, which is not equal to that. So that is a decent example, uh, a counterexample, if you're trying to say that the uh, sum of a product is a product of sums. That's actually not true. That's, that uh, is usually not an issue. Actually, people don't have an issue with that normally, but I just want to make sure that you don't run into that little trap. The other set of topics or, or theorems that you need to remember from pre-calculus are these special summations. If C is a constant, then all the following are true. If you add up a constant, that's what this is right here. If you add a constant to itself n times, which is exactly what this is saying, just C plus C plus C plus C, there's nothing that depends upon I here. So you're just adding C to itself n times, that can be simplified down to C times n. That is, if I said, hey, I need to know the summation, I equals one to three of five, that's gonna be for I equals one, it's five, plus for I equals two, it's still five. For I equals three, three, it's still five. So that's three sets of five. That's exactly what that's saying there. I know it could be, I could write as 15, but I'm just showing you. The other three um, are born from Gauss's formula here. The summation of the first n natural numbers. So this sum right here, let me write it off to the left-hand side. This sum is one plus two plus two three and so on and so forth until you get to n and that you should know because this is so important from your pre-cal course is n times n plus one over two that was supposedly proven by gauss when he was essentially around 10 or 12 years old so that is kind of an important formula it gets used quite a bit uh, in calculus so you need to remember that the next one that I think is the easy, uh, easier to remember, or I shouldn't say easier. This one you must remember. Based upon that, I would say the cube is the next easiest to remember. The reason why is because if you take a look at the sum of the first n cubes, or the first, uh, yeah, n cubes. So in other words, one cubed plus two cubed plus three cubed, all the way until you get down to n cubed if you take a look at that summation it actually is the square the result of it is the square of the sum of the first n integers or i should say natural numbers actually so it is the square of the sum of the first n natural natural numbers which is kind of interesting because then you could say the sum of the first n the, the sum of the cubes of the first n natural numbers is equivalent to the square of the sum of the first n natural numbers. It's kind of an interesting statement. A little confusing to say, kind of interesting. Anyway, this is an important formula to remember. And then in between these is what I consider to be the harder formula to remember, the sum of the squares of the first n natural numbers. And that is a formula you still have to kind of commit to memory. It's just not as easy to commit to memory as the first two, the sum of i and the sum of i cubed. However, you do have to remember uh, that formula as well. And you'll see it as we move forward through this video series that we're going to be using these uh, pretty heavily. So anyhow, write those down, have them on a piece of scratch paper ready to go, and I'll see you in the next video. The system of equations We must deal with them all at once Always looking for solutions Positive outlook overcomes Obstacles getting in our way Cause effects more than we can sometimes see Things for what they are And work together until you feel at peace yes. Listen close Don't talk too much That isn't kosher You may really hurt inside it doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.